Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with yet another Contrast Plus Cursed City painting tutorial. And today we are painting Dead Walker Zombies, I believe is their full title. Yes, that's what we're going to be doing. I'm painting five of the ones in the set. These are all five that are unique in some way, shape or form, based on the top, well, based on the grave markers that they're carrying on their backs. Um, and this is just because we want to have lots of variation in the unit as we do it, rather than just have one recipe for all of them. Because uh, that way, they're a little bit more interesting to look at on the tabletop. But don't worry, it's nice and easy, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So grab your brushes, grab your paints, and let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is going to work on all of our zombie skin. Now we're going to have five different recipes here, but trust me, they all look pretty awesome. And Basilicarnum Grey features in a lot of them, just because it really helps with making them appear like a dead and washed out. So the first color we're going to make is a roughly six parts contrast medium to two parts Creed Camo to one part Basilicarnum Grey. And on our first zombie, we're just going to start painting this all over. And we've used this color before on Gorslav the Gravekeeper. As you can see, it really works in terms of just making them look kind of dead and pale and, well, pretty gross. That's exactly what we're after because yeah, they are dead and pale <laughs> and pretty gross. So what we want to do is we just want to pick a zombie to start on. I'm doing this one, as you can tell. I'm just getting this paint all over the top, like so. And next up on our second zombie, what we're going to do is we're going to make six parts contrast medium to two parts basilicon and grey to one part wildwood. We're going to use this again just all over the zombie's skin. And for our next zombie, we're going to make a roughly four parts contrast medium to two parts Fire Slayer Flesh to one part Basilicarnum Grey. The reason this isn't quite as thin as the other two is that all the colours involved are quite, well, quite light in a way. So you don't need to thin it quite as much. get the effect we're after. And next up, we're gonna make a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part shyish purple mix. And we're gonna use this on our next zombie. Now 
And lastly, but by no means leastly, we're going to take some Griff Charger Grey just on its own. I'm going to use this to paint in our last zombie. And so with that done, you should have five zombies that look like that, just like this. And if you have 10 zombies, you should have two of each. It'll look pretty damn cool. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to remove the women just for a second. I'm going to just focus on the guys because what we want to do is we want to paint in their trousers. And the color we're going to be using for this is Cygore Brown. And then next up, I'm going to use some apothecary white to paint in our ladies' dresses. Don't worry if it looks just a little too clean. We are going to fix that. Just want to get this on as our base coat. And so with that done, what we're now going to do, just whilst we're waiting for that apothecary white to dry, I'm just going to pop her to one side. What we're going to do on one of our, all of our zombies basically, that's a bad example, we want this one. Is we're going to make a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Nasdrag yellow and Creed camo. We're going to use this on all of the vines and things that are sprouting from their bodies. Like that one there, and this one here, a little one down here. Another one just there. Like that. I want to do this on all of them. It's in the same colour across all of them. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Black Templar. I'm going to use this to paint in any straps, beards, headdresses, just various different little extra details that you have on each of your zombies. So for example, in fact, we'll do it on this lady here. Let's move these out of the way just for a second. So we can get Black Templar on them. We'll take our Black Templar and on her headdress here, we wanna use this Black Templar like this. She's also got a belt around her middle of her dress. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use a roughly two parts wildwood to one part black templar mix. We're going to use this for any manufactured wood. And what I mean by this is we've got areas like the stakes here, driven through each of their bodies. We've also got the kind of lid of their coffin that they are all carrying around, as well as any various kind of things like, for example, on this one, Got that stake there. And when I say manufactured wood, I mean anything that looks like it was made by the hands of mortals. Anything that's grown will be a slightly different colour. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're just going to use some plain old wildwood. 
You can use this to colour in any natural wood. So anything like these little tree stumps. And things like that. And with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to use some Basilicanum Grow. I'm going to use this to colour in any of the soil that they might still be carrying around with them. Just like this. And next up, we're going to use some Militarum Green. I'm going to use this to paint in any grass or leaves. And next up, we're going to use some Shaiish Purple. I'm going to use this to paint in all of the flowers. or roses. Just like that. And next up, we're gonna use some Griff Charger Gray. I'm gonna use this to paint in any stonework the grave here on this zombie's back. Like that. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Skeleton Horde. I'm going to use this to paint in any candles, any paper, and any other things like ropes and stuff that we want to be this similar sort of colour. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Thin Down. Iron Warriors. I'm going to use this to paint in any of the silver details. Well, any of the metalwork. So we've got a bell here, for example. He's also got a belt buckle. For example, on her, we've got a couple of pendants. And so with that done, you should have zombies that look somewhat like this, with most of our base coats established. Now, obviously, I haven't done that bird there on top of that one. And there's a rat somewhere that I haven't done. But other than that, we've got pretty much all of our base coats on. With those two. And we've got these two ladies. Like that. We've got this gentleman. There's the rat on his base. So, what we're going to do now, it's going to get a little bit messy. I'm going to add a little bit more kind of dead and grime and grossness to these zombies. And the colours we're going to be using are Militarum Green, Agaros Dunes, and Fire Slayer Flesh. And what we want to do basically is start with this guy. So what we'll do is we'll just move these ones quickly out of the way, just for a second. So what we want to do is we want to use all three of these colours in various different fashions. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little bit of Militarum Green. 
not very much at all. And just in certain areas, like for example, around here on the foot, just want to add a little bit of this Minotaurum green, just by stippling it on up the leg, like that. Similarly, we'll do a little bit more coming up the back, like so. I'll add a little bit more around here. And a little bit down there on the hand. A little bit more. And we'll add a little bit there on the shoulder as well. Then what I do is I wash the brush. And I grab some Agaros Dunes. And I do a very similar thing. Sometimes in the same place. Sometimes on its own. Like this, you can add it on the tentacles, on the skin, you can even add it on top of the clothes as well, just like that. Then we wash the brush, and then we grab a little bit of fire slayer flash. We do a very similar thing, just add a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there on the leg, a little bit here, a little bit there. A little bit to this root around the face, like that. It just gives you a lot of kind of variation in terms of the the body of the zombie itself. Similarly, wash the brush. You can do something similar to the dress on this girl. So again. Grab a little bit of Militarum green, just in certain areas, probably towards the hem. Just want to stipple it on. And a little bit around here as well. Wash the brush. Grab some Agaros jeans. A little too much there, but never mind. Grab some Fire Slayer flesh. Add it in there as well. And then in this instance, like I said, where I've got too much, what I can then do is grab some contrast medium. And just over the top. Just use it to thin it out a little bit. Kind of bring off some of that colour. A little bit more. Like that. You see? Now we've got this kind of gloriously dirty white shift. It looks like she's pulled herself from the ground. Because we've Kind of use the contrast medium to lift it off. We can actually just move, move it around. Always revisit that area as well. Just to grab a little bit more. Add it around here as well. Like that. And we can do the same thing on the skin. I think I look gloriously dead and zombie-like. And so with that done, you should have some pretty disgusting looking zombies. These are two ladies in their gross looking dresses. And here's of our men, just like that. So what we're going to do now, it's very quickly, is we're going to take some Basilicanum Grey, I'm going to use this to shade all of our metallics. Just like this.
And so with that shade applied, what we now want to do is we want to give the whole model a very gentle dry brush of Pallid Witch Flesh. This is including over the vines, the clothes, in this case the hair, the stone, the wood, everything. Just want to be very, very gentle here. Just so that it very lightly catches the edges. And so with that done, what we now want to do is we want to take some Volupus pink and we want to add this inside any of the holes in the skin and wounds that they may have. That's not going to look like it's doing a terribly big amount. It is just adding that little bit of contrast where we need it and that there on the shoulder and then we've got like in here on his eye we want to add the volupus pink like that what we want to do actually on this one as well is the bird has plucked out his eye we just want to use this volupus pink to paint in the optic nerve. Similarly on the head, just keep keep filling in these little areas, particularly in here as well. And with that done, what we then want to do is we want to take some phalanx yellow, use this to pick out any of their eyes. Some of them have them, some of them do not. And with that done, what we then want to do is take a small dot of Black Templar and apply this in the middle of those eyes. And then next up we want to use a tiny amount of Blood Angels Red. And this is just for the eyeball that's been plucked out. We just want to add this a little bit over the top of the lupus pink. And just kind of roughly add it a little bit wider around the yellow eye itself, like that. And so next up, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Ultramarines Blue. I'm going to use this to paint in the bird. Just like this. And next up, we're going to use some wild wood to colour in our rat. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some black Templar 
on top of our bird and on top of our rat. And next up we're going to use some dark oath flesh instead of painting our rat tail. Nice and easy. Just like that. And with that done, what we then want to do is we want to take some rust grey and we want to pick out all of the edges on our raven bird. And then with that rust grey applied, what we do is take some Fenrisian grey and we add this as a little spot highlight to the bird, just on the sharpest corners. Like that. And next up, what we want to do is we're going to take a small amount of Bane Blade Brown. Just want to use this to highlight our rat, just by picking out the edges of his muscles. Just like that. And lastly, just to finish off our rat and our bird, what we want to do is we want to take a small dot of Evil Sun Scarlet and just paint it in for the eyes. And lo, the Deadwalker zombie shambling horde is complete. And by shambling horde, I of course mean five. Five does not make a horde. It's the beginning of a horde. It's the beginning of a mob. It's the beginning of, well, it's just not a horde. But it's a lot of fun to do. It's always a good time when you get to use contrast paints like this in a messy manner with organic textures. It's always, always fantastic. And the results are always, always brilliant. Um, I'm particularly pleased with those dresses. I think they came out perfectly. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you'd like to support me further, like these legends and bosses that you can see on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.